Fun story, I started selling vehicles in 2004 at this location, at this dealership. I don't know what these go for new, maybe someone does, you can put it in the comments to see what kind of value this actually is for this car as a 2021 used. They do have one Nissan Platinum Aria, Aria, Aria. This is a full electric that they offer, $63,000 MSRP. So they're gonna have electric parking spots with chargers, I guess one, two, three, four, and two spots over here, five and six. I had the drone out, I want to fly it up over these dealerships, but you can see we are in a no fly zone. How's it going, ladies and gents? Uh, it's Sunday morning, I'm running some errands, and I'm gonna put a video together today Go into all different dealerships in the area while I run my errands to kind of see what inventory they have. Because, you know, I'm at the dealership here, Schumacher Chevrolet of Livingston. I'm used to what I have on the lot. I also have access to four other Schumacher Chevrolet stores. So some of our inventory will be swapped in from other, other dealers, other Schumacher dealers. So I do have the potential to sell more than what I have. Because right now uh, we have literally nothing. It's July 30th, tomorrow's July 31st, Monday. And this is what we're left with as far as vehicles on the lot. Now I'm a very positive guy, so I'm gonna stay very positive about this. But as you can see, you know, it's, it's kind of disheartening to have so few cars on the lot when you're a salesman and you make your living selling cars. Now that being said, I actually have a very good July going, uh, all things considered. And I'm gonna make a video later about that, probably on Monday or Tuesday, about how I did in the month of July. But again, this is what we're working with. We're working with two Chevy Blazers, two Equinoxes, that Traverse actually sold is getting delivered tomorrow. And we have one Silverado here, one out further. And we have two parked out on the front, uh, in front of the dealership. And we have one Malibu inside the showroom. So, I mean, we're, we're really, 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 really low on vehicles. Out here on a used car lot, it's really no different. We have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. We have 12 vehicles on the used car lot. We do have a Tahoe here. This vehicle is actually sold. It sold yesterday on Saturday. This is a 2020 Tahoe with about 26,000 miles on it. We also have this 2021 Colorado, uh, which has, I think, a little bit less than 20,000 miles on it as well. This also sold the other day. And that's it. This is what we have to work with on our lot. Not to mention we do factory orders, we do sell inbound units, and we can swap vehicles in from the uh, four other Schumacher stores. Actually, last week I sold three vehicles, two Traverses and a Trailblazer, which all came from our sister stores. So we do have options, and we just have to work those options to the best of our ability. Now, my question is, are other dealers having the same issues like we are? Because I see YouTube videos that say inventories are on the rise. I hear comments about people saying their inventories are stock full of cars. And this is the position that we're in. I mean, I can't hide this any better. Like, I, this is what we're dealing with. Actually, if you look at this footage here, this is what used to be our storage lot. We haven't used this lot in over a couple of years now, and the property has been sold. The building that was there was knocked down, and now they're actually building, we believe this is gonna be a residential complex uh, where you'll be able to, to rent apartments. So it'll be an apartment complex, and this is right around the corner from the dealership. So let's hop into Chevy Bolt, let's go for a ride, and let's see what other dealers have to offer. There's two things I'm looking for today. I'm looking for new versus used inventory, and I'm also looking for addendums on cars, because I have two suspicions. One is, well, new car inventory, you know, would be down based on manufacturer's production. Used car inventory, like our inventory is a little light on used cars because we're being more conservative with buying cars to put on the lot. You know, if you have a lot of used cars, it means you're at the auctions and you're filling your lot as much as you can, hopefully to supplement the fact that you don't have new cars. So those are the two things we're looking for. Uh, well, that's one of the things we're looking for. The second thing is, uh, addendums on cars. We've been charging MSRP for our cars uh, and it's very easy to sell out whatever we get in. We're competing with dealers who are charging over MSRP. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no denying that. I hear it all the time from customers. So if you do some shopping and you find a store like ours where we're at MSRP, it's a lot easier for us to sell these cars. If you're a dealership that's charging maybe 2,000, 5,000, 10,000 over MSRP, that might be a reason why you have more inventory available because you're not moving it as quick Again, I don't know any of this. I'm not using national stats. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm just gonna go on a joy ride, stop at dealers, see what they have, and make my assumptions. As we roll up Route 10 here into East Hanover, the first spot I'm gonna pull in is this Nissan dealership right here. Now, just at first glance, it looks like they have a decently full lot. Uh, I have seen this lot in the last two years uh, completely empty. So, you know, they have, uh, they definitely have some inventory. We have some cars up front. 
and we have a few rows of cars here. So I'm gonna get out, take a little walk around, see what we have. And uh, actually I could probably just drive through. Let me, let me walk through. I just spent a little time here kind of uh, looking at the lot and seeing what they have. It looks like in the front rows where they keep most of their pre-owned. I'm counting maybe like a dozen cars, maybe like 17, 18 cars on the lot. Uh, as far as new, everything here we're looking at is new. So I'm counting about 60 cars in stock. The majority of them are Nissan Rogues, Nissan Sentras, Nissan Ultimas. There are a bunch of Miranos. They got some Pathfinders. I seen one Titan, one Armada, as far as like the big trucks and uh, a couple of um, Frontiers. They do have one Nissan Platinum Aria. Aria? Aria? This is a full electric that they offer. $63,000 MSRP. Not gonna lie, pretty cool looking. Looks good. Pretty good looking color, nice wheels, full EV. I wouldn't mind getting behind the wheel and seeing how this feels compared to compared to my Bolt. I don't know their normal inventory levels. Like I said, I have seen this lot literally empty. Every Saturday morning we go to the diner, which is right across the street there, and we look out the window and this lot would be empty, you know, in the last year or so uh, with everything going on. So it looks like Nissan is putting some cars out there. I don't know if they have a storage lot, they might, which would mean there's cars elsewhere. But right now, uh, Nissan looks like it's doing pretty good. Next up, we're gonna stop at a Ford store. Uh, it's right up the street here. It's on the same side of Route 10 that I was just on. I'm gonna kind of run up Route 10 and then run back the opposite direction. We just passed the old Ford store. So they had a location over here. They built a new one up the street and that's where I'm gonna take you to right now. Let's see what Ford uh, at the moment at this location has to offer. Like I said, this store is literally brand new. They just built this building. You can see they had the big now open sign as you pull in here. I've never been here before. Looks like they have a tremendous amount of parking up front handful of i don't know you can't tell if they're a lot of jeeps looks like some used cars up front and then uh some new forts here so again let me take a look around let me familiarize myself with with what they have and i'll be right back with you at first glance this showroom is nice there's a lot of vehicles inside it's a very big showroom up front here we have a mix of like new and used uh, i would say maybe like maybe like six new and ten or so used what i did notice right as i pulled in electric spots so they're gonna have electric parking spots with chargers, I guess one, two, three, four, and two spots over here, five and six. We got some Broncos. These are like the Bronco Sport model. We got a really nice Tremor right here. Ford F-150 Tremor Edition is also one at the far end of the lot, uh, off to my left, down at the very end over there with a couple of Mach-E's. So, so far I'm looking uh, mostly at a little bit of new, a little bit used. This whole row here is all used. So this is where they're keeping some of their pre-owned. That's about, what, about a dozen, maybe a dozen vehicles. And then around the back, as I drove back there, is where a lot of their new cars were. Big, big showroom. I'm looking through the glass there and I got, I'm seeing at least 10 or 12 vehicles inside the showroom, which is real nice. These must be delivery bays where they can park the cars and pull out. Uh, back here, you're gonna see some vehicles that are probably trade-ins. A whole bunch of new Fords, mostly Broncos, a couple F-150s, and I guess that's the Escape. Yep, these are Ford Escapes. So they got a couple of those. We all know the mid-size SUV segment or crossover segment is very popular. A couple more Broncos, a really nice green Outer Banks Bronco Sport, looking nice. And then we come around the corner here and you're gonna see a bunch of F-150s, you know, mostly pickup trucks. So we got a couple of new ones here. And then down this side of the building all the way to the street is all pickup trucks. And then again, a couple of Mach-E's. So I'm counting like maybe 50, 55, 60 new vehicles here on the lot, which is, you know, it's a decent amount. Again, I do not know if they have any kind of a storage lot. They still have the old Ford store down the street and there are some cars parked over there as well. So they might still be running inventory out of that location, I guess, until they shut it down or whatever, whatever their plan is. Here we have the first Expedition that I've seen, full-size SUV, which is really comparable to our Tahoe, you know, our Tahoe and Suburban line, which for us is very difficult to get. Seeing only one of these on the lot uh, that I noticed so far, I imagine probably a little difficult for them to get those as well. And uh, that's really it at the moment. Again, I don't know if they have a storage lot. You know, we used to have at our dealership when we were in peak times, 250, 300 cars in stock pre-pandemic, you know, we would have maybe 60 up on the lot and then we had a storage lot around the corner, which is what I showed you in that aerial footage um, where we would keep another 200 cars, you know, which we don't need that lot anymore because we don't have that many cars. So I don't know if that's the case here, but this, you know, lot looks like it has a decent amount of inventory.
you know, when I say they have uh, a decent amount of inventory, it's really for today's times because a lot of people are reporting how inventories are up year over year. Well, last year we literally had like nothing, you know? So even though you're up now, it doesn't mean we're anywhere near the levels we're used to in the auto industry, you know, pre-pandemic 2017, 18, you know, going into 2019. So things are still way off from where they ever were. Right up the street here, uh, literally next door, we have a Maserati dealer. We're gonna blow past that one, no need to look there. And then there's a Lexus store here, which I do wanna pull into. I don't know, I think all their inventory is around the back. Uh, that's the Maserati store. This is the Lexus store here. Now I know Toyota has been having a lot of trouble it seems with inventory. I'm wondering if Lexus is you know in the same position. You know, basically they're sister brands in a sense. Uh, nothing parked up front, but they could be leaving that for customers. Take a little ride around. These cars all have plates on them, so that looks like uh, either service or demos. These are all Lexus plates. Uh, wow, that's pretty cool. I'm assuming that's all their loaner cars. They must have a nice fleet of loaner cars because they're all Lexus plates. Uh, literally everything here has a license plate on it, which means it's probably not for sale. A lot of cars in service. Okay, so they keep their cars behind that fence. Let's take a quick peek over the fence here and see what we got. Well, we have a mix here of cars. Most of them look like they're uh, brand new. Decent supply. I would say there's gotta be at least 100 cars back here, maybe a little bit more. One over there on jack stands with no wheels. May actually be even a little bit more than 100, maybe like 150 or so. In here, from what I'm looking at, everything literally has plates on it. So I don't know if it's all service, maybe body shop, things like that. But let's cruise around a little further and see what else we can find. I've never been to these dealerships before, even though I live right here. So for me, it's like, I don't know where they normally keep inventory and stuff like that. But looking at it, literally everything here has license plates on it. So it's gotta be all service vehicles or trade-ins, things like that. You saw all the cars on the other side of that fence. We do have a bunch of cars right here. Uh, just looking at the stickers on the windows, they're not factory Moroni labels. So these are definitely used cars down this whole line here. Mostly Lexuses, I'm assuming certified, things like that. Here's a new one. And that's basically it. We're, we cruised around the dealer, we're on our way out. I would love to know what they normally have in stock and if what we saw out there is low compared to what they normally carry. You know, again, I'm assuming in today's times it is, but you never know. I'm gonna continue to cruise up Route 10 here. I think the next dealer I'm gonna see on the right-hand side is actually a Honda store. So we're gonna take a look at that. I wanna drive up to a Buick GMC store that's not far away. I do wanna look at similar brand, General Motors, and see how those dealers are doing compared to us. And on the way back, we'll be able to hit a another Nissan store, a GMC store. Uh, we got the big Jeep store here in East Hanover. Uh, you know, so we'll, we'll look at a bunch more. Next up, we have the Honda store here. This Honda store, I think, is actually open for service on Sundays. It looks like it definitely is, because there's people hanging out here. We have some used cars on the right. This is actually pretty difficult to do, considering that I don't know what these lots look like in normal times. Uh, we do know, just by the sold sign in this Civic here, that that is sold. These have what look like used car stickers. So this whole section, yeah, there's a sign right there, certified pre-owned. So certified pre-owned, they have a decent amount. It looks like it's primarily Honda. Two, four, six, eight in a row, 1630. There's gonna be at least 40 cars here on my uh, on my left, 40 used cars. Certified, again, mostly Honda. These two have uh, used car labels on them, so these are used. Actually, it looks like this is a used car lot and a service lot, and the new car lot is next door. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, this is the new car lot. And this new car lot is severely low on vehicles. I'm not even gonna get out of the car, except maybe to look at that Civic Si over there. But check this out. This lot is relatively empty and they have racks on the right side here where I guess they would double stack their cars and there's not a car on them. So I'm assuming this is where they put all their new car inventory. It looks like they are severely depleted compared to even some of the other dealerships we just looked at. They have a couple of vehicles up front here. I mean, maybe a dozen. That's about it. And they have this cool looking uh, 
Is this an SI or an R? Let's go check it out. This is a 2021, so this is a used car. Type R, low mileage, 45,990. Good color. Brembo brakes, red calipers. It's got red interior, manual transmission. 45,990. I don't know what these go for new. Maybe someone does. You can put it in the comments to see what kind of value this actually is for this car as a 2021 used versus what it would be brand new. Let's see how many miles are on it. Uh, 16,000 miles. Nice car. I would say so far this Honda store is closest to us as far as inventory. Uh, now again, we have five locations. I don't know if this store has multiple Honda stores, but um, you know, even though my lot is low at the moment, we can pull from the other four stores, which is uh, very helpful for us. Oh, there's a Hyundai store. So at last minute, so we'll have to skip that. Right across the highway here is our first uh, GM store. This is a Buick GMC location. So it'll be interesting to see what they have because it's the same product that I sell. So if Chevrolet inventories are depleted, does that mean that GMC Buick are also? And that's what we're gonna find out in a couple seconds. Dealerships in New Jersey are closed on Sundays. So it's actually, oh, Hummer EV. Uh, they're closed on Sundays. So it's actually pretty cool to be able to walk around and sort of window shop on a uh, on a Sunday without having to be disturbed by you know salespeople things like that. I know I've had customers come in that say they do that all the time. You know, just want to look at his Hummer EV here real quick. This is pretty cool. You may know that I have a Silverado EV reserved. I haven't heard any news yet about when it'll be built or when the production date will be, but uh, pretty excited about it. This thing really is massive in person. Looks awesome, although I do like the Silverado EV look better uh, versus the Hummer. Here's a 2024 Silverado HD that's been all done up. This actually has 2,000 miles on it and a price tag of about 104,000. Uh, really good looking rig. They also have a Mercedes G-Wagon here. What I'm noticing right off the bat is this dealership definitely uh, must look to, to buy pre-owned vehicles. They have a Chevy SS here. They have a lot of sports cars, Camaros, Corvettes. There's even a, um, there's a Mustang inside that I can see through the window. Got BMW. So here's a store that looks like they bought a lot of pre-owned or they actively buy a lot of pre-owned, I should say. Again, maybe that's something they're doing a little more aggressively than other dealers. There's a lot of Corvettes here. So, you know, I can't imagine all these Corvettes were traded in. I got to imagine they're actively seeking them out, buying them. Really nice Z06 2016. Yeah, they got a lot of, uh, a lot of used inventory here but what we want to do is we want to see where are the new vehicles you know what do they have as far as new and are they in a similar situation to what we're in so far everything here has been used that we've seen so far and it looks like now back here is where they have their new cars and they seem to have a decent amount right here we got about eight or nine encores as we look here we have the enclave they have about 10 or 11 of them here that i can count this is the same uh, body style as far as size to our Chevy Traverse. So they definitely have a handful more than uh, than we do at the moment. And then these are the Envision, which they have about seven of these. Over here, they have about seven GMC Terrains. They have one Yukon and three Acadias. Now the Acadia used to be the same size as the Traverse in the Enclave. They shrunk it down, I believe in 20, I want to say 2017. I hear the new 24 is going to be back to the bigger size. Uh, so they have three of these here. One, uh, one Denali Yukon XL and two, four, six, maybe like 10 pickup trucks. So this dealer has a pretty nice little inventory combined new and used new cars, maybe 50, you know, 60 in stock that I can count. Mostly used, um, again, a Mustang inside, a Viper inside, all those Corvettes that were parked over here. So it looks like this dealership really focuses on pre-owned cars and that's, uh, you know, especially sports cars. It looks like they like to buy, carry, and offer that to the public. And I guess if you buy those cars right and you can sell them and make some money, it's a good thing. However, we don't know how long these cars have been sitting here because with prices still up and interest rates up, you know, are people buying vehicles like that? You know, that's the question. I just pulled into a Kia lot. 
I didn't pull into Infinity or Acura. They're really just not competitors of ours. Uh, neither is Lexus for that matter, which I drove in earlier. But Hyundai and Kia are competitors of ours as far as um, what I hear people shop. So, you know, the Kia uh, Sorento versus maybe a Blazer or an Equinox, a Telluride versus a Traverse. So I do compete with Kia on a regular basis. Uh, Kia's got a decent inventory. This whole front row, uh, two rows actually, is all new cars. So they have a decent selection there. And if we pull around here, you'll see some Tellurides. Um, not much more inventory this way though. And then that lot up top, I don't know if that's them as well. This is all used cars with plates on them and body shop, things like that. So I don't know, maybe the inventory is not that big. Again, one of the tough things about doing this, oh wait, this goes up. Yeah, let's see, can I drive up here? Oh, this is neat. Okay, so here is their auxiliary parking lot, I would imagine, and this is relatively empty. There's only cars up here with license plates on them, and it looks like they're trading. So again, what looks like a lot of cars on the front line um, for inventory, which there may have been about 35 to 40 cars up there, when you come up here, it's empty. And you know, if this is any indication of what it used to be like at our store, we would have our cars up front at the dealership. Again, maybe 50, 60 cars on the lot, and then around the corner was another 200 cars. So with this being empty, this lot here, I can safely assume that they don't have a storage lot somewhere else where there's, you know, 100 cars, you know, waiting to be purchased. So everything is really up front, you know, for the, the eyes to see as they pass by on the highway. And again, what looks like a lot of cars right off the bat uh, tends not to be once you dive in, you know, a little deeper. I think that's what I've been noticing so far when I look at all these different dealerships. So far, if I had to say, I would think Lexus had the most new car inventory, and it seems that they have all their stuff locked behind that fence, behind that gate where we, uh, where we kind of peered over, and that could be for security purposes, you know. But you know, they do have a lot of keys right here on the front line. Again, it's two rows of vehicles. We're maybe looking at maybe 50 vehicles here in stock at the moment. Um, again, we're not gonna shoot to infinity. What I wanna do is go into Morris Plains because there is a Toyota store, a Ford store, and a uh, Jeep store all right in the same area. So I wanna check and see what those have. One thing I have been hearing is that Dodge, Ram, Jeep have the most inventory out there. And this lot proves that point. I mean, they are loaded up with trucks. They got a tremendous amount of inventory here. A lot of Jeep Wranglers. My sister and brother-in-law actually just, I think they leased it. They just leased a Jeep Wrangler 4XE like this one here. Uh, theirs was actually, I'm sorry, it wasn't like this, it was a Rubicon. And they said it had like a $14,000 lease incentive, uh, which is part of that federal incentive and that sort of thing. So you can see a lot of Jeeps, Wranglers, Gladiators, bunch of Ram pickup trucks. Here we have the Grand Cherokee. I'm gonna squeeze through here bunch of vans Grand Cherokees let's check this out down here there's a 2023 Charger GT blacktop special edition wild color looks cool this is my sort of uh, color if I was to buy a sports car I like the black spoiler on the back cool looking car now we have some empty spots here looks like this is where they park trades things like that there are some more Jeeps over here and then uh, there's another lot over here where they can park vehicles and I'm gonna tell you a little fun fact, a fun story. I started selling vehicles in 2004 at this location, at this dealership. Now this is a Jeep store now, but back in 2004, it was a Chevrolet store run by the Warnock family of dealerships. And this is where I got my start. And we used to have all the cars filled in here, uh, Chevrolet vehicles, mostly commercial vehicles, vans, you know, 3,500 trucks, Kodiak chassis cabs, things like that. And in the back, just like you see here, was all the rest of the inventory, Tahoe, Suburbans and stuff. You know. You know stuff that was sold back then this is where i had my first experience with the corvette the the 2005 c6 it's the first time i ever drove a, a ssr with a manual transmission shout out to my buddy maddie oz who actually taught me how to drive manual transmission in that car going to get pizza which was great uh the dealership didn't quite look like this this was all rebuilt obviously but the showroom was sort of in this area and then where they have their showroom up front here now uh, this was actually our service entrance and that was a service garage door so they kind of changed the whole front end of the dealership. One funny story I will tell you, when I first started 
you know, my manager was, the guy's name was Ken Rouse. That was the manager, the sales manager at the dealership when I started. And the best advice I ever got from that gentleman was learn the product. And when I first started, he would give me keys to a vehicle, like maybe a Tahoe, say, go out, drive it, sit in every seat, fold every seat, press every button, learn everything about the car, take about two hours doing that, come back, and then you're gonna show me everything you learned. And that's what I did for every vehicle. And they continue to do that now. When we get new vehicles out, I hop in and I play around with everything. That's the best way to learn. Well, before I learned that, I had taken it up. The guy was looking at trucks down here on the lot when we had them, you know, all the commercial trucks. And it was great because I started talking to him and he's asking me questions and I'm hemming and hawing because I don't know the answers to these questions. But I said, let me go get the keys to the truck so I can open it up. I spent maybe three minutes with this guy so far. I go into the showroom, I grab the keys, I come back out front, the guy vanished. In the three minutes I spent with him, he knew I didn't know what I was talking about. And he's like, I'm out of here. I'm ditching this guy. And he bounced. And that was one of my first experiences uh, in the car business. You know, when you first start learning and you first get out there and in, uh, in trying to sell something. The opposite side of the spectrum was along here is where we used to park all our used cars. And I had a family come in. It was a mother, father and a son. They were looking for a small SUV. We started talking about different vehicles. We landed on a red Equinox that we had on the lot. And all I did was ask questions. And I told them I was new and I really didn't know everything about the cars and I'll learn with you and you know, we'll, we'll learn together. And they were super nice people. And I ended up doing a spot delivery, sold the car, spotted it. That was the first car I ever sold uh, in my career. It was a red 2005 Equinox. Actually, you know what? They were looking at used, but that was a 2005. That was a brand new car they ended up buying because this was in 04 and the brand new 05 Equinox was already out. This right next door is another Ford store. This Ford store, again, was owned by the Warnock family back in the day. New ownership now. They got a decent little lot right here. They got mostly uh, used cars up on the front. I noticed when I pulled in, they got some new trucks here, new Broncos, new Ford uh, Expeditions. They actually have a decent amount of Expeditions. And let me see something real quick. Uh, no, it's just a part sticker. One thing I have not noticed yet at any of the dealerships is market adjustments on the cars. Now I hear from people coming into my store that there are market adjustments on vehicles. I don't know if maybe people just aren't putting the stickers on the vehicles or maybe I'm just hitting dealerships that aren't doing that. Now that's market adjustment that doesn't talk about fees and dealer added options and stuff like that, you know, that they could be uh, putting on the vehicles. Check out this Bronco, Raptor edition, real nice. That Toyota store I was talking about is right across the street. So I'm gonna jump across the highway and we'll take a look at it. I wanted to fly the drone. I had the drone, I wanted to fly it up over these dealerships, but you can see we are in a no fly zone. If you look at the map here, it's actually pretty cool. It shows you uh, where you're at in relation to where you can fly when you have an airport local. So right now, anywhere in that red or this blue, you cannot fly a drone, it just won't take off. At least this one won't. If you go back to where I work in Livingston, um, where is it? We are right here. That's the dealership, the Chevrolet store. So we're just outside that no fly zone over in Livingston. Anywhere in that blue circle, you just cannot fly. So we'll have to just take a drive over and see what Toyota has to offer. Um, so far, it looks like Honda has been the worst as far as inventories. I hear Toyota is pretty bad as well. So we're going to take a look at that next. See if we can get across this. Nobody on the left, nobody on the right. We're good. All right, so this is generally a pretty big Toyota store. You can see they do have some cars up in the front lot. I mean, there's a dozen. Oh, they got a charger over here. They got their charging location. Uh, these are all used cars. You can tell by the stickers that are in them. So not too much to offer as far as used. I wonder if they have stuff up those stairs. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. Okay, so they have, um, no, not much. One, two, three, four, five, six cars. Those look like trade-ins. A lot of empty space in the back there with nothing parked. But uh, let's see if we can drive around, get a better look. Drew that works at uh, our store with me has a buddy that works for Toyota and he's been struggling. You know, here's a guy who said, I think he said he's been, you know, on average 25, 30 cars a month at the store he works at and they have virtually nothing to offer, nothing to sell. It's a shame. Let's see, so here's all empty spots. Now these could be all for customer parking. I think most people would agree when you pull into a dealership, usually the hardest thing to normally do is find customer parking because everything is normally filled up with cars that are for sale. These are all service vehicles, uh, it looks like. That has an inspection sticker in it. So nothing here. 
And can we go back here? Let's find out. Oh, this is gonna bring us up to that other parking lot we were just at. Yeah, I mean, I'm imagining this is where they park all their inventory when they have it. So this store severely depleted as well, as far as inventory. I mean, from what we saw up in the front, 12, 15 used cars, a couple of cars here, and a couple up front. I mean, it looks to me like this dealership literally has less than 10 cars available for sale uh, as far as new cars at the moment. We're gonna do one last stop. There's a BMW store right down the street. We're gonna head over there, see what they have to offer. And then we're gonna wrap up this video with just our final thoughts. Again, BMW, not really competition of ours, but it would just be something cool to take a look at. This is a big store. So this is the kind of store that would have a lot of cars in the showroom, most likely on display. You can see they have some stuff out front here. And you know, BMW being a high-end brand, this is where a lot of people talk about interest rates are so high and prices are up, or people really buying cars, especially at this level. Now, I'm in New Jersey, in Morris County, uh, Essex County. These counties have a lot of very, very affluent towns in them. So, you know, I've never had trouble selling things like Corvettes, Suburbans, Tahoes, things of that nature, because generally a lot of people have the money to buy whatever they want, whenever they want, regardless of, you know, situations. It seems like, um, Seems like they don't have too much inventory here. Just a bunch of stuff right here. I couldn't even tell you what's was it, M, M5 maybe? M3? I couldn't even tell you what half of these cars are. I mean, it's just not our competition. That's stuff I deal with on a daily basis. I'm thinking a lot of these cars are service vehicles. A lot of them do have service. Uh, a lot of them do have license plates on them. So they didn't have all that much inventory up front. And with that, thanks for taking this little ride with me to some of these dealerships just to kind of check out and see what they have. This is really something that I was curious about, you know, to compare it to what I've been dealing with. Inventories, I think, across the board, everything we've seen today, unless dealerships have other storage lots, are down from what we're used to, the normal car business. Now, when I say the normal car business, what I mean is from when I started in 2004, all the way up to the pandemic in 2020, you know, the chip shortage in 2021, and currently what we're what we're still dealing with in 2023. So the first, you know, 16 years of my career has always been the same, you know, 350, 400 cars on a lot, you know, my last dealership here, 200 cars, 250 cars on a lot, always had abundance of cars and less buyers. For the last three years, and up until now, we have more buyers than cars available. And even if you look at a store that might have 40, 50 cars in stock, is that really a lot of cars for that particular dealership? Because one thing we need to know is what do they normally sell? So like where our store, our location used to sell 110, 120 vehicles. Now we're selling sometimes 60, 70 vehicles. Like we're still way down from what we normally sell. And it's just based on not having inventory. I can tell you right now, if we had Chevrolet Bolts, we were just talking about this in, in the dealership yesterday, we'd sell literally every one we had. Like if you gave us 50 Bolts right now, we'd have all 50 sold within seven days. One week, we'd sell all 50 of those bolts because we're getting calls relentlessly on this car. You know, by the way, the bolt's back. We'll talk about that in a future video. So I guess in conclusion, who knows what's going on? But this was just a glimpse of what it's like where I live in New Jersey. Obviously it could be different where you are.